Okay. Now, so uh, you must obey him. You must agree with him. You must obey him totally. You must be faithful and uh, faithful to the end. You must be willing to endure hardness. Second Timothy chapter two verse three. Second Timothy chapter two verse three. Hardness, not hardship. Hardness. You must be tough, like soldiers of Christ. You must be tough. As his partner, there will be times when he will say, you can't sleep. You must pray throughout the night. Hardness. And soldiers, there will be times when they will say, you can't eat. You must fast. Hardness. Not hardship. Hardness. You must be tough. Well, that's one thing I thank God for, for the redeemed Christian Church of God. Little by little, he has been teaching us hardness. You won't believe it that I heard that one, one priest was complaining that I asked you to fast for 50 days. He said, what kind of God is that, that this man is serving? What kind of God we ask people to fast for 50 days before he will answer them? I said, why are you angry? I, I'm not talking to your congregation. I'm talking to my own children. My children have not complained to you. Let me ask you, are you tired of fasting? <laughs> I mean, I'm even already thinking it's a long time ago that we fasted for 100 days. Maybe we should bring 100 days back. Hardness. Tough. You must be willing to pay any price. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 15. Second Corinthians 12, verse 15. Paul says, I'm willing to spend and be spent. Spend and be spent. Acts 21, from verse 10 to 14. Acts 21, from 10 to 14. Paul said, I'm not only ready to suffer, but if need be, I'm ready to die for the cause of Christ. You must be willing to pay the price. Now, partners are a select group of people. They are not just any Dick and Harry in the congregation. They are specially selected. In Mark chapter 3, from verse 13 to 15, Mark 3, 13 to 15, Thank you, my father. Lord asked me to tell another woman here tonight, he said, the doctors have just told you you can't have a child. He asked me to tell you, nine months from now, you will show them your baby. In Mark chapter 3, from verse 13 to 15, Mark 3, 13 to 15, Bible says there was a crowd around Jesus Christ, but he climbed to a mountain and began to select, select special people. In John chapter 15, from in verse 16, John 15, verse 16, he said, You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you. And ordained you for a particular purpose that you go bring forth fruit 
and then make sure your fruit will abide. Select people. It's not just everybody that can become his partner. Select people. Chosen one. He said in Matthew 22 verse 14, Matthew 22 verse 14, he said, many are called, but few are chosen. So how can I have the honor of being chosen? After all, we know God is sovereign. He does as he pleases. But in Acts chapter 10, from verse 34 to 35, Acts 10, 34 to 35, the Bible tells us that, yes, he's sovereign, but he's no respecter of persons. And in every nation, every nation, he that fears God and works righteousness is accepted of him. Who shall I say? Who will go for me? I am here, Lord. I fear you. I will obey you. I won't mess around. I'm here. Like he said in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, 1 Samuel 2, verse 30, you must be willing to honor him. He that honors me, I will honor. Like I've told you when he's, when he's talking about first fruit. Number one is the senior partner. And the senior partner needs to, I mean, has the right to say, hey, 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 hey. anything that comes into this business, I have the first choice of it all. But God said it is honoring him when you do that. He doesn't need your money. The owner of the business, when at the end of the day they are talking about uh, uh, dividends, he owns the company. So when they say your dividend is so much, many a times he will just be laughing. He doesn't need it. He already has more than sufficient. And that's why he says, if you honor him with your first fruit, he said, he will also return the honor to you, that you too will have more than sufficient. That's his promise. I'm believing God for you that one day somebody will come to you and say, I traveled. And I want to bring you something. But I don't know what to bring to somebody who already has everything. One day you will have more than sufficient. You want to be his partner? You must be willing to be a fool for his sake. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 26 to 29. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 26 to 29. The people he will choose are those who are ready to let go their position, their, their, their brilliance, etc., etc., et and just say, hey, I'm ready to be a fool for God's sake. Like I told you last month, I am a fool. That's why he chose me. Let me tell you the truth. The worst person that God could say is choosing to be a pastor is a mathematician. Because mathematics and Christianity, they run in parallel lines. Mathematics will say, if you prove it, I will believe it. 
Christianity will say, if you believe it, I will prove it. Exact opposites. But then God can cross the line and grab a fool and turn him to a vessel unto honor. The reason why many of you are still just members of the congregation, you come in, sit down, hear the sermon, go as customers. It's because you don't want one little pastor to begin to control you and say you are a worker. That's why there are many people in the churches and there are very few workers. But I believe some people will hear the word of God tonight and decide to become fools for Christ. Let me round up. Because I want you to spend some time in praying tonight. Because your life is just about to change. I came as a customer. I end up a partner. That will be your testimony too. Like we have been told at the very beginning. Fire is involved in preparing whoever will be his partner. Before he began to talk to Moses, there was fire. Fire on the mountain. <laughs> And before people really know who Elijah was on Mount Carmel, fire fell. In Isaiah chapter 6, from verse 1 to 8, Isaiah 6, from verse 1 to 8, before he could say, Who will I send? Who will go for me? He had needed to use fire to touch the mouth of Isaiah. If you look at the book of Isaiah, you find that Isaiah thought he was already a big prophet. He had been prophesying from uh, Isaiah chapter 1 to 5. Big prophecies. But after the fire touched his lips, then you see how many, how many more chapters that he wrote. He became such a powerful prophet that he could stand up and say, the Lord himself will give you a sign. A virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son. Ah, uh, if an ordinary prophet said that they would stone him to death. But after the fire touched his lips, <laughs> they knew that whatever he says will come to pass. I'm not claiming to be Isaiah. But in the name that's above every other name, in the name of the one who has touched my lips with fire, I decree that it will be well with you. And then you will notice the relationship between God and Peter. God had promised Peter you will be fisher of men. For almost three and a half years, he didn't catch a single man. But when the fire fell on Mount Carmel, 
Ah, things changed. Things are about to change for you. If you like, say amen. If you like, don't. No, you see, the reason why I say you don't, need, you don't really need to say amen is because I am not praying. I'm just telling you the truth. Because the fire is going to fall on you tonight. And once the fire falls, nobody will be able to stop you. But before the fire can fall on you, because the fire of God is a consuming fire, and what fire does, as I've told you before, when fire comes in contact with anything, it changes that thing to itself. Whatever refuses to be changed to fire becomes ashes. When the fire of God falls on you tonight, everything that is divine will begin to flow through you. But whatever is not of God is going to become ashes. That's why you cannot become a partner of God unless you are thoroughly born again. You know, the Bible says if a man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things pass away. How many things become new? All things. So if you are ready for a new life, not as a customer, not even as a staff, but an, as a partner of the consuming fire himself, Step number one is that you must be born again. Your salvation must be thorough. You must know that you know that you know that you are truly, truly born again. You must be born again in such a manner that you would not want to have anything to do with sin anymore. So I'm going to give a long rope because I know some of you are very far away tonight. I'm going to count from 1 to 20. If you want to make sure that you are 100% born again, before I say 20, make sure you're already standing before the altar. I'm counting now 1. Precious beloved, God bless you. Thank you for staying tuned with us till this very moment on this platform. We are committed to seeing that the gospel come to you in its simplest form and by the mouth of the Lord through his servants, our Father and the Lord, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. In this very moment, in time as this and this season as this, that you will not be left out of what God is doing. You will not be left out of the promises, the prophecies, and uh, the good news, the glad tidings that Jesus is preparing. Oh, how lofty and beautiful are the feet of them that brings glad tidings. Their feet are always beautiful, Jesus said. And so, everyone that partakes in this vision receives the blessings of the Lord. You can become a particle also by sharing this video to everyone around you, ensuring they get blessed too, ensuring that their lives are lifted. On this platform, we, we see to it that the promises of the Lord, the prayers of our Father and the Lord for His people reaches every year. And as these prayers get to you, as this word of knowledge gets to you, I want you to believe it. I want you to claim it. 
I want you to believe it. I want you to make it part and parcel of your life. I want you to engage it in prayer. I want you to set your heart aright with God that these prayers definitely will come to pass, will be made manifest in your life and everything you do. Do well to subscribe to our channel if you are a new viewer and also share this video to your loved ones and everyone you can get in touch with. God bless you so much. We love you so much and thank you for staying tuned with us. Jesus loves you so much. God bless you. Thank you so very much. See you in our next video. And for you to get notifications, we'd like you to hit the notification bell by the side of the subscribe button and you will be notified once we upload a new video. Thank you and God bless you.